So we determined the dynamical equation for the probability density and we said that this is going to be i del dot. <coughs> this is the Liouville operator. And the solution to this equation is e to the power minus l hat n times t rho of xn comma 0. We also saw that if we set the left hand side to 0 so that rho of xn comma t goes to just as a function of the phase space variables this would essentially imply that rho of xn must depend only on the energy where your energy total energy is given by the Hamiltonian which is a function of xn. Now we have been saying that in the phase space which is this inequality let's say so when you allow all energies greater than equal to 0 less than equal to E then E defines this surface and you have a volume contained within this surface right and we said that in this when we developed this picture of probability density, classical probability density, we said that imagine that this phase space is now filled with continuum fluid of state points. This fluid is made up of state points and this flow is essentially governed by the Hamiltonian dynamics. And the fluid of continuum fluid of state points that you are visualizing that you are imagining is essentially an incompressible fluid. But how do we see that this is an incompressible fluid? So the probability flow within this volume is as is similar or is exactly the same as a probability as a flow of an incompressible fluid. In an incompressible fluid, the volume element does not change, right? So which means that let's say if I look at the volume element d of xn at a time t, I have a Jacobian that connects it to the volume element d of xn at t0, right? So if you imagine two time snapshots, one at t0, the other one at t, and then if you consider a volume element in the phase space, which has denoted by t0, then this volume element will go to a the volume element dxn at the time t. So the question and the relation between these two volume elements are <coughs> given by this where j is the Jacobian which takes you from t0 to t. So j of t comma t0 I'm sure you have learned Jacobians is Pn t0, q, sorry, this has to be. So note that, okay, if you, let's take one step backward and we want to, so the volume element over here is d of Pn t0, d of Qn t0. And the volume element over here is d of Pn t, d of Qn t. Correct. So essentially, there is a transformation that is involved over here, which means that Pn T0 goes to, well, we'll not say D, we'll say Pn T0 goes to Pn of T and Qn of T0 goes to Qn of T. Right. Once, so this is a transformation, and therefore I can write down the transform uh, the Jacobian for this. This is going to be. And similarly, you will have uh, Qn of t del Pn t0 del Qn t of del Qn t0. It's exactly the same thing that we have defined earlier when we did 
thermodynamics if you recall. So this is the Jacobian is the determinant of this matrix. <coughs> but let's write down the equation for P and T plus right and qn of t is qn of t0 plus q dot of n t0 delta t plus of course you have higher order terms which is delta t square over here right now let's look at this derivative now right if i look at this derivative then del p n t del of p n t 0 is 1 plus del p dot n t 0 del p n t 0 times delta t plus order delta t square. Similarly, n t 0 is del p dot n del q n t 0 delta t plus or higher order terms right <coughs> one can do it for the q n t also so del q n t del q n t 0 is going to be 1 plus del q n dot t 0 del q n t 0 so there is no dot here so one has to be careful delta t plus order delta t squared term. so once we have this and therefore one can also write down the corresponding term for uh, del q n t del p n t 0 right so if i now using this form of the jacobian using the hamilton's equation of motion what i should have is del p n t 0 del dot del p n t 0 delta t will not will ignore the higher order terms over here and this one is going to be 1 plus del q n dot del q n both evaluated at t0 this quantity is going to be del p n dot t0 del q n t0 times delta t and this is going to be del q n dot del p n oops the n has now come the, as a subscript t0 t0 delta t correct <coughs> so 1 plus del q n dot sorry del p n t 0 del p n t 0 plus del q dot n t 0 del q n t 0 there are higher order terms which we will not consider so if you just consider this times this then this is going to give you this result right but we did this this is equal to 0 so therefore j of t comma t0 is 1 plus order delta t square there is no delta t term that survives this equation so one can therefore write down j of t comma 0 the jacobian you start from time 0 to time t is j comma t comma t0 j comma t0 comma 0 right so this becomes j of t0 comma 0 1 plus order delta t square 
So dj dt is equal to limit of delta t to 0 g comma minus which is going to be 0 right therefore it follows that dj dt is equal to sorry dj dt is going to be 0 which would imply that d of xn comma t is going to be d of xn comma 0 therefore the volume at this volume element that you considered at t equal to t naught and at t equal to t are the same so the volume is preserved they are full of probability and this essentially is another statement that this is a conservation of probability therefore the probability cannot be lost it does not leak out of the volume therefore this flow of probability is essentially an incompressible flow which means that there is no loss in probability so we looked at uh, the probability n particle probability density and we said that this equation the dynamical equation for the evolution of this obeys the level equation of motion is essentially the level's equation of motion the solution to this equation is sorry there has to be an i here e to the power i l hat n times t rho xn of zero right further we established a little while ago that the flow probability flow is incompressible which essentially means that there is no loss in probability right so how does one visualize this you can imagine that there is a hypersurface which is defined by this conservation of energy in the 6n dimensional phase space so i can imagine that there is a hypersurface which is defined as by this equation <clears throat> with the right hand side e is a constant now i can consider a small patch which will denote the initial conditions of all my particles right and as the system evolves this patch slowly and slowly evolves throughout the phase space because there are several trajectories this is when if you wait sufficiently long enough it encompasses the whole of the phase space it's like a uh, spreading of an ink drop in a liquid <coughs> the Liouville equation has pro several properties number one is this is obeys the time reversal symmetry because the underlying microscopic dynamics obeys the Hamiltonian equation of motion which is time reversal therefore this equation obeys time reversal symmetry right it's a Hermitian the level operator is a Hermitian operator and if you look at the nature of the solution particularly this term this essentially tells you that the solution is always oscillatory in nature <clears throat> therefore one must understand that this equation does not describe the irreversible decay of the system to a unique equilibrium state so you, one must start off with the equilibrium state from the very beginning itself <clears throat> so as time evolves in this picture that we have tried to establish that this is an incompressible flow incompressible flow in the phase space and therefore if you start off with a small patch of initial conditions it's going to evolve as time progresses 
the trajectories are going to evolve so that it slowly and slowly covers the whole of this phase space, right? Now, what does this mean? So, is this always guaranteed, right? That is the point that we, what, uh, which we want to discuss. Now, before we try to discuss the consequence of what we just described, that if you start off from a small patch of initial conditions, it slowly, as the time evolves, if you wait sufficiently long enough time, there is a randomness already inbuilt because in this initial conditions, therefore, the whole thing covers the whole of the phase space. And what is the consequence of that before we describe that? So, we want to, I want to just write down what we are mainly interested in. We are interested in typically our expectation values of dynamical variables, right? And say A of Xn, right? <coughs> well, not Xn. We are typically going to be interested in dynamical variables A of t, right? Then the average of A of t is defined as d of xn this is the measure a of xn rho of xn comma t right which is going to be d of xn a of xn e to the power minus i So this is kind of the Schrodinger picture where the operator does not carry the time evolution, but it's the probability density which carries the time evolution. We can write down alternatively the same expression for average of this, which is the Heisenberg picture, where I'm going to have A of, I'm going to take this term, which becomes d of xn a of xn comma t where now this dynamical variable obeys an evolution equation which is l hat n sorry just being a little bit clumsy a of xn comma t right Anyway, this is just as a remark that one should remember, but we are mainly interested in an equation of this form where I define the expectation of a dynamic, dynamical variable in terms of the probability density. Now, coming back to the original question that we posed that with the picture that we have developed for rho of x and t, <coughs> we realize that first of all, this vector is the tip of this vector is essentially bound to move on this surface which is defined by the conservation of energy right such surfaces are what are called isolating integrals so for an n particle system <coughs> this is the only isolating integral that we can have so in the phase space an isolating integral would con would consist of a closed surface there are non the other type of uh, integrals which are called uh, non isolating integrals so your conservation your constants of motion your conservation of momentum conservation of angular momentum and your conservation of energy of these only this one forms the isolating integral and this is therefore very very important in what we are going to discuss now clearly <coughs> let's uh, draw this thing a little bit over here i have this surface which i have again let us just write down this as this and as I said that as the system evolves, it slowly and slowly fills up the whole of the phase space, right? So what does it mean for us? We cannot observe these quantities, right? We cannot observe x of n experimentally. We are rather interested in a limited set of dynamical variables. A of t, it can be the total energy, it can be the total momentum, whatever that is, we are only limited to observing 
this. Now, as we have said that clearly this is one possible way of defining the expectation value. There is yet an alternative way of defining uh, this expectation value, which would say that if I have the time series of A, which means I measure A as a function of time, then I can define that <coughs> a different average, sorry, with limit of t2, capital T2, infinity. So, essentially this means that you measure this quantity for a large time window and essentially you calculate the average and this is going to be another average which you write down A of t. This average, so here it is no longer a function of t but it's just this. <coughs> this average is defined in terms of your phase space why because you are using the phase space density over here and this is purely a time average right now the question is is this equal to the phase space average right so now that we have two averages that is defined one is the time average average a of t and the other one is a phase space average. The question is whether they are both of these are equal. And when are they equal? And the answer to that comes from the ergodic theorem. The ergodic theorem essentially tells you that not only that the time average should exist, but if the system is ergodic, then the two averages are equal. So this happens when the system is ergodic or alternatively the flow in the phase space is an ergodic flow. There are two kinds of flow generally which is considered in a phase space which is an but we will not worry about that right now. So our point is that if the flow is ergodic then the time average and the phase space average are equal. But what does this mean? Let's go back to the picture where we were visualizing the phase space and our phase space trajectories had all covered up the uh, phase space. Now, if you consider a small region R as indicated over here by the black uh, closed surface and you ask that what is the probability that the state which is denoted by Xn is in this region R. Then, since the whole of the phase space is completely filled, therefore the answer to that question is essentially that probability, let's say, is equal to sigma r divided by sigma e, where sigma r is the surface area contained by this black, uh, contained within r, and sigma e is the total surface area. Sigma e is formally defined as d of xn delta of hn xn minus e. So essentially the delta function guarantees that the tip of this vector, uh, this uh, measure is can only takes account, uh, takes into account uh, surface area contained within this volume, right. Now since the flow is ergodic, the time average is equal to the uh, phase space average Therefore, this probability also means that this is equal to the time that the system spends in this region R to the total observation time. So, when the flow is ergodic, the, in equal areas in the phase space, the system will spend equal amount of time. If there are no isolating integrals for an n particle system if there are no un isolating integrals other than the conservation of energy then the flow is ergodic there can be isol other isolating integrals and find for an any n particle system there can be uh, other isolating integrals other than the conservation of energy and finding the number of isolating integrals is really really a very difficult job Right? Now let's come back to this expression. So once I have this probability, then you see this probability I can write down as 1 over sigma e integral dx, sorry not dxn, 
but essentially an integral over the surface area in the region R, right? <coughs> you can write down in terms of xn, but you have to also include uh, delta hn minus xn and the integral is over the region R, right? Now, if you recall, your uh, when we discussed continuous random variables and probability densities, we said that the probability of finding a variable x within a range or within an interval r was essentially over the interval dx and rho x, right? And surprisingly, if we just look at these two, then this has a similar form and we immediately read off that rho of xn is 1 over sigma e, where sigma e is the surface area and defined by the isolating int integral h of xn is equal to e. This simple looking expression that we have come to essentially tells you that all the points in the phase space are li equally likely to be visited. It is also a point, the point to be noted is that this expression does not contain time anymore because we have waited sufficiently long enough for the system to evolve so that the phase space is completely filled and we have therefore reached a stationary state. Correct? <coughs> this equation is what is called a microcanonical ensemble and the average of any dynamical variable is now dx n a x n delta h n x n minus e 1 over sigma e. The delta function once again ensures that it's the surface which is only matters here and not the volume. We shall get rid of this. We shall see later on how to take how to get around this difficulty. Correct? <coughs> it is also worth noting that when we visualize this picture over here of the phase space, we said there is no other not be, I mean when we visualize this picture, essentially this also means that there are no other interactions present in the system. So you do not have you, you just have your system. There is nothing else. So therefore, this would correspond to an isolated system, what we consider in thermodynamics, right? An isolated system in thermodynamics essentially means a microcanonical ensemble in terms of probability or statistics or statistical mechanics for that sake. Good. So now that we have this probability density, what do we want to do? The bridge is given by the statistical entropy or we will just write down entropy S as minus sum over Pj ln Pj except now we have minus integral dxn oops rho xn ln rho of xn divided by cn but clearly what we are interpreting as entropy does not have the dimension of entropy so what we introduce is a boltzmann factor s right If we introduce sigma e, rho, if we use this expression for rho of xn is equal to 1 over sigma e, then you see your entropy is kb ln sigma e over cn. Note that reason we have introduced a CN factor over here is because this surface area is dimension full because this surface area has dp1, dp, uh, dq1, dp2, dq2, so on and so forth and we shall later on see what CN is going to be. Now coming back to this, 
This quantity is called the structure function and is defined as d of xn delta of h of n xn minus e. And you can imagine that for a 6th n dimensional space, it's a notoriously difficult quantity to evaluate. So what do we do? Well, we start off by saying that, look, instead of considering that the system is strictly at an energy level E, I can also consider a spread in the energy level so that I replace this by E plus delta E. If that is the case, then you can think, then this surface area that we are considering is now replaced by the volume which is contained within this shell defined by E n E plus delta E. So that I have now omega of delta E as a function of E as integral dx n over this region. And your probability density rho of xn is just going to be omega delta E. So that your entropy is going to be Kb then omega delta E over Cn. Right? If your delta E is, weak, uh, is small enough, this can be approximated by sigma E delta E, right? Not otherwise. We shall also remove this restriction on delta E. So now that we have replaced sigma by E by the volume which is contained within this shell of energy E and E plus delta E, even this volume is also very difficult to calculate. Before we go ahead with this argument that how we can replace this, what we want to say about two points is that this sigma e that we originally started off with essentially that represents the surface area <coughs> of the isolating defined by the isolating integral is also a measure of the total number of microstates of the system, right? What we have been calling xn as states are essentially the microstates of the system. And in principle, although we have been denoting it with by E, this for a hydrostatic system, for an n-particle system which physically occupy a certain volume in space and has certain particle number, is more explicitly written as sigma. E over n and so is omega delta e as e v n right so now what we want to look at is how do i place this cumbersome calculation of the shell in the hypersurface by something more easier to do for that again we consider this inequality where now my system is allowed to have energies all the way from zero to e so essentially you define this hypersurface which is denoted over here and the surface, the bounding surface is defined by the energy E uh, whereas the system is allowed to have energies from 0 to E. What you now do is essentially you break up this volume into small small shells of energy of width delta E. So let me just quickly try to schematically draw them. This is also delta E. Again, you have an inner. So you keep on doing it so that you have E over delta E number of shells. The outermost shell, which is contained between, so let's write here outermost shell, which is contained between E and e plus delta e 
has the volume omega delta E E V N. Why am I certainly suddenly interested in this or because this is exactly the quantity we have been dealing with earlier. Therefore, if you look at it carefully, so this is the shaded volume that we are referring to. Now, the total volume omega EVN, which is contained by this hypersurface, is sum over I omega delta E, EI, comma V, comma N. But if you look at this expression, it's very, very evident, even this pictorial representation is very, very evident that this quantity, the total volume which is contained within this hypersurface is definitely more than the shaded area, right? So, therefore, we can write down this as omega delta E, E comma V comma N is less than omega E V N. E over delta E number of shells if I multiply this by delta E E V N then the total volume is less than this volume right so now if you take a log omega delta E is less than ln omega is less than ln E over delta E plus ln omega delta E. Note that this is the one which enters the entropy. Right? On the other hand, <coughs> so this is the total number of microstates, log of that, and is therefore is an extensive quantity. In contrast, E is an extensive quantity, and therefore E over delta E would scale as n, whereas log of omega would scale as n. So if you now take the limit, the thermodynamic limit of n to infinity, large number of particles, then you see in this inequality, this term drops out of the competition because this is only ln of the order of ln n, whereas this term is n, this term is n, this term is n. So, not, I mean, what I mean to say is of the order of and this term is of the order of ln n. So, this term drops out from this equation and you have very nicely ln omega delta E is less than ln omega delta E, right? So that in the thermodynamic limit, the omega delta E, ln omega delta E, what we have been using in place of the entropy is ln omega E V N, the total volume contained within the phase space, right? So we rewrite our equation or expression for entropy as Kb ln omega E V n divided by C n. We shall come back to C n, but right now it suffices to say that C n is equal to h to the power 3 n for distinguishable particles. and is n factorial h to the power 3n for indistinguishable for indistinguishable particles. H is the Planck's constant and it's not very surprising to figure out why h comes in because if you look at the measure in the phase space it is d of xn if you expand this then this is dp1 dq1 dp2 dq2 so the product of p times q has a dimension of action 
same quantity right, as h as the Planck's constant. So essentially, uh, you become it becomes you non-dimensionalize this volume by h to the power three n. The introduction of this h to the power three n and the n factorial is clearly something which is done by hand in classical statistical mechanics. We have no way of introducing it very naturally in the theory. We shall see later on how quantum uh, statistical mechanics does it.